This episode of Congratulations is brought to you by the Cash App. Crazy, 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 crazy. Oh yeah, dude! This is it, episode one twenty four. Finally, we got to episode one twenty four of Congratulations. Always been waiting for this episode. You understand? Uh, and um, before we even start, I guess, you know, let's do fucking see where I'm going to be coming up. Uh, we got um, t- the Tennessee dates, which are, well, first of all, we got Hoover, Alabama um, on June 26th. And we've got Memphis, Tennessee on June 27th, June 28th, Chattanooga. Uh, now, that's the name of a place. Now, that's the name of a city, Chattanooga. Chattanooga is the name of a city. Is it an Indian thing? I don't know. It sounds like it, it could be, but it's probably not. Maybe it is. But I'll be at the Tivoli or the Tivoli Theater. I don't know. I don't These words where it's like you don't know how they're pronounced, I'm not into them. It's like just have it be like I, everyone knows how to pronounce car. It's car. Even though my Irish friend would say care, and that's a different word because care is, is, is another word. It's not car. Care is care. C-A-R-E. Uh, and then I'll be in Knoxville, Tennessee, which begins with a K, which is fucking stupid, right? It should just be N-O-X. Also, over time, we should have just eliminated the K, right? We do that as people. We do that as people where we, 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 we you know, the we don't have fucking tails anymore. We used to have tails as when we were fishes, right? When we were fucking little beings in the waters. Anyway, dude, I'll be in Chattanooga and uh, Knoxville and Memphis and Hoover. So get tickets at com. That's the Follow the Leader Tour. That's the Follow the Leader Tour at com. You go check it out at Uh And it's the tour. You click on tour and you can see where it's going. Uh, it's all good. It's just, it's just, it's going. Um, so I woke up early this morning and I had a, uh, a meeting. I had a meeting with with uh with Brian Callen and uh some other guys and my agent and all that shit Josh Lieberman you guys know him you know he's the guy that sounds like that and then um and look, yeah, and look uh and so and and so uh Callen always fucking interrupts a meeting and gets real boring in the middle of it we'll be like on a roll and he'll be like also you know He'll be like, also, it's about more than that. It's about, and you're just like, oh, for fuck's sake. And I just look at him and I say, no, man, come on. And I'll say in the middle of the meeting, well, the problem is you're getting very boring. I mean, you're about to get boring. And that shows some fucking levity in the fucking meeting. Thank God. I'm there to literally save his asshole. And, uh, but we, I was just, it's like. I go to this – I hate having meetings at fucking Three Arts, dude. That's my management company because there's a guy in the valet where – you. first of all, you don't need the valet guy. When, anytime you, there's a, a fucking lot and you don't need a valet guy, it's just like, no. <laughs> no. Parking is fine. You got another guy to do a job. Dude, there's another fucking one at this coffee place I go to. And it's so annoying. You get a ticket to get into the fucking place, both of these places. You get there, ample parking spaces, and there's a guy. In the coffee place, there's three guys. There's three guys in the structure, and they're just sitting there. And they stop, and they stop you. Already you're driving to the spot, and they stop you, and they say, hey, who are you here for? And I just say, I'm here to get coffee. And they go, okay, go up to the next level, which I already know because it's closer to the coffee entrance. So then I get there. There's another guy there. And the guy says, where are you going? I say, I'm here to get coffee. And the guy says, okay, why don't you park right there? And points to one of the spaces that are open. And there's like fucking 40 spaces open. I never park in the one he tells me because it's not, it, it, it doesn't matter. If this guy is going to make the fucking job more 
of a of a of a fucking inconvenience, dude. When they get people, dude, they, this is so something that would drive me nuts. People that help you when you don't need to be helped. I have a question for these guys. Am I an elderly lady, or am I fucking young as shit, dude? I'm only thirty nine. It's like crazy how young I am. I don't know if there's anybody younger than me. And I'm driving in. I mean, I'm pre- practically going fucking goo goo gaga. I'm so young, I constantly check for a diaper. I'm so young, I shit my pants and I say, it's okay, I haven't learned how to not do that yet. <laughs> That's how fucking young I am. So you don't need to help me park, dude. Because there's so many spaces. Now, if it's a fucking mess, if there's, you know, if parking is like just if there's so many different cars in the lot, like fucking uh, what's that fucking shit the, where they put the, the, the duck and the chicken and the ham in the fucking turkey? And it's just like, dude, what, what are you doing? What is that called? Turducken? Hey. Turducken, go fuck yourself, man. You know how bullshit that is? What's wrong with chicken? What's wrong with duck? What's wrong with turkey? Dude, turducken's only okay if you put bubblegum in it too and Pepto-Bismol. Otherwise, I ain't eating it. Put it all in there. Put it all in there. You know how fucking bull- shitty it is to other animals that we just rip them apart and stuff them in another animal and then eat it and then shit it out? We just go <laughs> out of our fucking ass. So gross, dude. That's like if a turkey would fucking kill a... Uh, think about th- what that would be like if there were bigger beings out there, like giants, that would just kill all of us, white, black, Mexican, and Asian, and then just stuff all of us together and eat them. They'd put it all in a fucking black guy and just eat it. And they'd just call it fucking... <laughs> white Blasian. And they just fucking eat it. <laughs> They just call it fucking white Blasian, white Blasian. And the giants are like, did you eat white Blasian today? It's, it's the day where we, it's the day where we conquered all. Anyway, dude, uh, what was I talking about parking? I mean, you know, so, and then they're like, yeah, park here. I get so fucking heated, dude, in my car. And it's, and. How to make, look at this YouTube video that one fire pulled up. How to make turducken. Here's how you make turducken. You don't. You don't. I want to make a video that's co- that on YouTube that's how to make turducken. And you click on it and it's just, and it's just me. And I go like this. You don't. Um, so uh, I do that, and then fucking, and then so in the in the coffee shop, it's the worst, dude. Because so it's like I'm, I, I go like this. Well, I'm going to coffee, and they go like this. Okay, pay. they know too. They know. What are you doing here, guy? Uh, on the other hand, it's nice that they just have a job. You know, it's fucking hard to get a job out there. So part of me is like, eh, at least this fucking company's paying them. You know, what company is doing this shit is what I want to know. Anyway, and then and this valet one, this this. I don't know if this drives me more nuts. I do it less. Go to three arts. So I get to the thing, and it's always one of the guy, two or three of the guys. And he's like, they're always like, they're always like, when they're like, how long are you going to be? And I'm just like, what the fuck does it matter? I got to take a ticket anyway. What am I, your fucking girlfriend? We just talking and shit? Hey, are we in bed? So I say an hour, and the guy goes like this. Okay, oh. All right, why don't you park there? And I and I park there, and I park where he says, because it's more official. It's not like a cafe. I'm like, all right, maybe he knows his shit every time. I park there, and it's always a spot that's like free and clear. I'm not blocking a car, and he says, oh, can you leave your key with me? Which drives me fucking nuts. If I'm free and clear, why do I need to leave a key? Why do I need to leave a key if I'm free and clear? There is zero reason... You need to leave your key with somebody if your car is free and clear, okay? So I give it to him because I'm like, all right, what, what, what's the point if I'm like, why? What, he was going to steal my fucking, my, uh, my, my ibuprofen and my, and my shit. I don't keep shit in my car. So 
I leave and I come back and the car is always in a different space. Dude, do you know how fucking annoying that is? It's 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 pretty annoying. I get back down and it's pretty goddamn annoying, dude. That I show up and my car's just in a different place, dude, for zero fucking reason. He just moves my car to another area for zero reason, dude. Other cars are just in all sorts. And, and then I got to go back. Oh, here you go. Here's your key. Oh, thanks, dude. Thanks for this nothing. This guy's making fucking turducken in a parking lot for no reason. He making turducken in a parking lot. <laughs> young Hove. He's making young he's making turducken in a parking lot. That's what happens when you're bored with your life. You get cars, you mismatch them in a the parking lot like you're making turducken. It's Thanksgiving dinner. Get out your day thank get out your dishes, it's Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> What's that line? Get out your dinner. We got guests coming to Thanksgiving. I love Jay-Z will get so specific that you think he's actually stopped recording and like some real shit's going on. Thanksgiving dinner. Get out your dishes. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. Stop. Oh, wait. No, you're rapping? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, yeah. I can't say the N-word, so. Oh, yeah. These bleep is coming. Get out your good dishes or something like it's Thanksgiving. First of all, no for sure. Get out your good dishes or something, send secure. I mean, then the next line is, and none other than the R, and without further ado, I like, like, Freddy, get ready, it's, I mean, just, and okay, whatever, but, you know, don't need to go all into that, really, but, so. These motherfuckers making two duck in the parking lot. <laughs> Yeah. Jay Z's so insecure when he laughs. Got two duck in the parking lot. <laughs> Hove. I guess. Hove, I guess. Did you see the video of Beyonce fucking just straight up moding that girl who was trying to talk to Jay Z and lean over Beyonce? And the girl was like at the basketball game. And she was one of the fucking Clippers owners or Lakers owners or whatever the fuck. Who cares? One of the Golden State Warriors owners. And she leaned over and and she was like t- talking to Jay-Z and she leaned over um, Jay-Z or uh, Beyonce. And Beyonce kind of like shifted so she wouldn't do it. And now here's what the annoying people are saying. Oh, yeah. Beyonce didn't like how she was talking to her man. No. It's not that. The lady was just leaning over too much. And that's fucking annoying a little bit sometimes. Also, there's probably that whole thing where even though she was like uh, one of the um, Golden State Warriors owner's wives, it it still was like, you know, still like where it was like, ah, fucking don't act like you know us, dude. You're not with us, you know. So Jay-Z was talking back all cool and Beyonce just kind of got... Gave a little bit of a look. That was nothing. But then the fucking beehive, as they say, were giving her death threats. Hey, chill. Hey, Beyonce fans, chill. Hey, also, you call yourself the beehive, you know? In non-ironic terms. Look at her fucking just... She obviously just kind of is like, what's up with this lady? And then just kind of fucking shucks her a little bit. It's kind of cool, dude, because the lady was just like leaning way too far over. But who cares? See, that's the thing. Hey, what are you doing? That's what you got to do. Don't shuck. She's Beyonce. So she can't get get fucking crazy with it. I was thinking about this. Like I was thinking about this. Um, well, I don't remember what the example was, but man, imagine being so famous because you can only be so famous if you're like, if you don't say crazy fucked up shit. And then if you do, it's because you're famous because of that. There's there's different levels of it. But it's like, um, 
you can get as famous as like Dennis Rodman was. A lot of young people probably don't know who they who they who he is, but he was a basketball player that was like fa- cra- famous for being crazy. You can get that famous, but uh, you can then you can only if you're already really famous. Hey, turn this off. There's, if you're already f- really famous, you can't get. And then you start doing crazy shit like um, like Charlie Sheen. You can't sustain that. It's just bothering me. You can't sustain that for a long, too long. Like when Charlie Sheen was like Tiger Blood and winning, like that shit only lasts as long as it can and then it blows over because he wasn't famous for being crazy. He was famous for being a famous actor. Or you can be the like crazy famous, but then you can't say anything like fucking Keanu Reeves or Tom Cruise or Harrison Ford. Like if all of a sudden Harrison Ford put out a video that was like, you know, if Harrison Ford all of a sudden put out a video like how my video was making fun of fucking Armenians last week. Hey, if Harrison Ford was like, how come Armenians lo- like love to say shit like, hey, 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 don't disrespect me. People will be like, oh, Harrison Ford is, what the fuck is, fuck, people will be like, fuck Harrison Ford for saying this shit. So like that would be my nightmare. To be, maybe Harrison Ford's not the best example, but to be, like, that famous to where you can't say this shit. Like, if, like Jennifer Garner. Like, if she just said that, people would be like, oh, she lost her fucking mind, dude. I, that's, to not be like that, not be able to say what you want, to me, that's crazy. That's so insane. That That would be the worst for me. And I realize I'll never, you know, be that fucking... The only way I could get there to get as famous, that famous, is to be because of I'm an insane person, you know, like it to be a fucking literal. Like if I did, if I had like a, that it was a serial killer, then that would only add to it. And you'd be like, wow, this crazy fucking comedian who had a podcast and was talking about how he made a cult literally started killing people, literally started killing businessmen and killed fucking 12 businessmen. If I was going to kill people, though, it would be businessmen in suits, straight up. Not if they if they got out of their suit and I had the knife ready and they were like, oh, fuck, they got out of their suit. I'm not doing it. It would be like live tonight at 11 talking about comedian Chris D'Elia. Live at 11, we will be talking about Chris. Med- they wouldn't even they would disrespect me by having new new news at fucking 3 a.m. that nobody listened to. We live at 3 a.m. We're talking about the comedian turned serial killer Chris D'Elia. Who once had a spat with Albuquerque and now has killed at least 13 businessmen mm-hmm. with suits on. Uh, I would give all the interviews too. I would dude, I'd keep my phone up my butt, go to jail and fucking do live videos after that. And you'd see shit all over the lens. It's gross. It's gross. But that's why you're here, my babies. But like Tom Cruise was like, is like so famous. And then he did the fucking crazy like, I'm in love. I'm in love. You know, with fucking Katie Holmes. And then got like, people started talking about how he was in Scientology and shit. And then he got a little bit, people were like, whoa, what's going on? And then for sure, his PR told him to shut that shit down because he stopped doing that. And then he just kind of was like, okay, well, let me just do ghost protocol and take out my craziness in how I am just going to run across buildings with a fucking wire tethered to the top. Like like I'm a tetherball, dude. Tom Cruise was a fucking straight-up tetherball in that movie, man. Ghost protocol, you know, the name of it. Ha! Ghost protocol. I feel like that Mission Impossible movie was the big fuck you. It's like, okay, you're going to let us get get away with calling them whatever we want? Let's see. Ghost Protocol. <laughs> what was the fucking tweet that Delaney did, Rob Delaney, about Ghost Protocol? It made me laugh so hard. It was when it came out, and he was like, alternate names that they were going to use. Rob Delaney, and it was Ghost Protocol. What were the names... Is it down there? It'd probably be the top one, no? Right protocol, too. 
writing protocol up there. And that's 100% obvious on fire. Uh, well, let's just read all of his tweets that say about Ghost Protocol. I bet he's so... He, dude, Rob Delaney's so funny. Uh, I mean, dude, I think he was on a tear with the movie. I only actually fist fight my dad. The only actual... <laughs> the only... I love when he... The only... Where did it go? The only a- actual fist fight my dad and I ever got into was when I said Tom Cruise's hair looked cool as hell in gross, co- gross protocol, and he laughed. <laughs> go down a little more. Oh, here we go. Titles considered for Mission Impossible. Oh, here we go. Click on that. He wrote, I'll probably get in... <laughs> I'll probably get in trouble for posting this, but I found a document... that at Paramount Pictures that lists the titles they considered for the new Mission Impossible film before settling on the excellent Ghost Protocol. Please repost in case they take it down from my site. Mission Impossible Loaf Paragraph. (laughs) Mission Impossible Plop Centrifuge. Centrifuge? (laughs) Mission Impossible (laughs) Cunt Sullivan. Wow. This shit is what the internet was made for. Mission Impossible Beef Pamphleteer. (laughs) Mission Impossible Frost Debutante. Well, I can't say the next one. It's got the N-word in it. Mitch Calibrate Fern Gable Tooth Peach Bottle Top North Wiggle Down Cock blanket squirt. Wow, he's funny, dude. That guy's funny as shit, huh? It's annoying how funny it, he is. Fucking. Pass vaccine. One more word on the man. Call it Tom Cruise on Tom Cruise Scientologist. <laughs> I think it's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist, and it's something that you have to earn. And because a Scientologist does, he... A Scientologist does. Or she has the ability to create new and better realities and improve conditions. Hey. Uh, being a Scientologist, you look at someone and you know absolutely that you can help them. <laughs> so for me, it really... Well, uh, you know... Just fucking killing it at life. I want to be like that. I want to just walk. Fuck that, dude. I'm going to be Scientologist. I want to just walk into a room and just know. Do you understand what I'm saying? A blanket fucking knowledge of what the fuck is going on. And I swear to God, too, I'll not only they laid that song over, the Mission Impossible song over this for some fucking reason but i'll bring a fucking straight up not iphone ipod a separate ipod with speakers that connect and don't fucking bluetooth in and i will fucking straight up play it while i walk in the room it's it's something that uh I don't mince words with that. Yeah, we know, bro. With anything. I'm a Scientologist, dude. That policy to me has really gone... How do I do it? There's a time I went through and said, you know what? When I read it, I I just went... Yeah. That's it. Said? That's exactly it. There you go. Said? Nothing. And that's what I want to do. When people ask me about Scientology, and I'm focused right right now, whatever the first step is, I did it. Probably realizing that you want to be it, you know? That's probably what it is. If you look at the Scientology book, they're like, yo, first step is straight up realizing you want it. You need help. There we go. I'm on my fucking way, babies. And I go and I go like this and I go and I go and people ask me about Scientology and fucking whenever I finish the program, whenever they get all their dirt on me or whatever, they go like, they go like, now you're a Scientologist because you gave us some dirt. And I go like this, cool. And then people say, what's up with Scientologists? And I go like this, dude, when I looked at Scientology, straight up, the thing was, it's like a light bulb went off. Like I looked at it and I, and I read what it was about. And at first, when I first saw it, I was just like, forget it. I was like, forget it. 
And then somebody asked me about it, and I was and the first time they talked about it, and I was like, what's going on? And they looked at me, and I was like, you know what? I know. I know what's up. I walk into a room, and you just you feel it, right? He or she can walk into a room and just feel it. And I get and I'm very and, – and that's the thing. What's the thing? The thing is it's just – you know, it's a being, it's a presence, it's an essence where you walk in and you just, you have that because you've done the steps and you've worked and now you're mashed potatoes and people are just like, wait, what? And you're just like, no, now you're mashed potatoes. They're like, well, he didn't really say much. He definitely said he was mashed potatoes. That's the thing about Scientology. You know, you know, you walk in and like a light bulb went off. When you first read those words, you read that and you know a light bulb went off and you're finding, you know that you can help and psh, whoo, and all of a sudden you're mashed potatoes and it's all good. And they're like, wait, what? And they get dirt on you and your mashed potatoes. If Tom Cruise fucking straight up looked at an interviewer and said, I'm mashed potatoes, they would fucking believe it. That's the fucking thing I want to get to. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, me undies. You probably spend about 90% of your life in underwear, so don't you think you owe it to yourself to make sure you're wearing the softest undies in town? That's why I only wear me undies. Straight up, I got them on right now. Let's look at what color. I was feeling gray. I was feeling gray today. I put on gray because it matched my gray shirt. Uh, me undies uses the coveted micromodal fabric, which is a full three times softer than cotton. Not only will you feel like your loins are being hugged by your uh, by joy which is uh, something that I didn't write. But it's true. And MeUndies gives you multiple style options for both men and women, and that's awesome. I, dude, I have ones with bananas on them. Wink. You get it? It's like a cock. But I have ones with bananas on them, and they rip. They're awesome. Not only they actually tear, but they rip at life. I love it. Men can now try the boxer brief with fly, which is the same. Uh, great cut as boxer brief, but now with an added option for guys who prefer to go through the gate versus over the fence. Sometimes you know I do both. Sometimes I'm feeling one way or another. I put you put on thing. I take it out. Take it. Sometimes I take it out under. I don't even go over. I take it out under. I lift the whole leg part up and I go under, dude. I go under. I Harriet Tubman it. I go under. Uh, to get your fifteen percent off, look. I get fifty percent off a pair of the most comfortable undies you will ever put on. All right, to get your 50% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash congrats. That's MeUndies.com slash congrats. ShipStation. Uh, when you're selling online, listen, getting your orders out can be a real pain, time-consuming. It can be expensive. There's so many carriers to choose from, and how do you know you're making the best choice? You need to go with ShipStation.com. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. And guess what? I use it. If you've received a dent shirt from me or a bags unit shirt, well, it's because of ShipStation. ShipStation helps you get orders out quickly, save money on shipping costs, and keep your customers happy. No matter what you're selling, Amazon, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface. Uh, they're really easy to manage from any device, even your cell phone. So you could do it there. Uh, and they offer big discounts on shipping costs. Uh, and it's great. No wonder ShipStation is the number one choice of online sellers. You'll ship more in less time with the best rates available. And that's coming from me, babies. Right now, congratulations with Chris D'Elia listeners. Can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use promo code CONGRATS. There is absolutely no risk. You can start your free trial without even entering your credit card info. Oh, look at that. They figured that out. Just visit ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type congrats. That's ShipStation.com. Then enter promo code congrats. ShipStation.com. Make ship happen. Uh, Always Be My Maybe on Netflix is out now. And uh, it's written and starring comedian Ali Wong, who we love who I work with all the time and who is amazing, and fresh off the boats, Randall Park, who is hilarious. Uh, I talked about this movie with my mom and dad, and they won't shut up about it. They love it. They said how funny it was and how great Allie was, and I was like, guys, I do stuff too, okay? But they loved it. They, they, they liked it so much, my dad was like, that movie was so, and he waited so long to say the next word, I was like, come on! 
Whatever it is, it's either awesome or what. And he said, good. And I was like, wow, it's good then. If he's waited that long, you got to watch it. It's not your typical rom-com, which is actually what my dad said. Uh, it has Ali's amazing sense of humor, which is awesome because she's, you know, great. Uh, Keanu Reeves makes an appearance as himself, and that's got my vote because you know how big of a Keanu Reeves fan I am, and I love him. Uh, go to Netflix now uh, and add it to your queue. Uh, it's uh, certified, certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, and you know that's a good thing. Uh, love Ali. Love comedies. Love romantic comedies, honestly. The genre is killer. And uh, always be my maybe. Streaming on Netflix. Go watch. Uh, Cash App. Cash App is brought to you by Congratulations, the only app brought to you by me, Chris D'Elia. You know what? I swear, I'm, I got to do the episode where I'm just doing ads. That's going to be, that episode's going to rip. Just to get so respectful on you guys, to just do ad, 60 minutes straight up of ads, and just in, a, in no shirt, drinking a virgin Mai Tai. I don't even know what that is. I just heard, of, heard about them. What's a fucking, uh, what's the other one where you put the leaves in it? What's that one called? Is that Mai Tai? What's the one that girls drink? Mojito, Mojito dude. Remember when girls figured out that thing like fucking four years ago? They were just like, wait, there's the mojitos? And then they're, they went nuts. Wait, this how you, you know why it's such a girl th- drink? Because you can put so many things in it. Dude, you know what girls love? Things. Girls love things. They straight up, you know what guys, guys like? I don't know. Guys, guys, I don't know, whatever. Guys like, this is what guys like, whatever. This is what girls love, things. Dude, if you could hold the thing, forget it, dude. Forget it. Tchotchkes? You should see how many fucking tchotchkes my mom has. How much is tchotchkes sound something like, it sounds like it's a racist thing. Is it? Probably. I have no idea. I have no idea. All I know are tchotchkes are things. And if it's racist, come get me, babies. I've got no clue. Uh, dude, my mom's got so many tchotchkes. And then she's got the nerve when she's done with the tchotchke to be like, hey, Chris, I got some stuff for you. Come put this tchotchke in your house. Fucking bullshit. I got a whole closet full of tchotchkes because of my mom. Life's hard. But what I'm saying is girls love things. And that's why my ties fucking kick ass. Give a girl. Oh, you don't think girls love things? Dude. Give your girl a bag full of fucking shit in it. Give your girl a bag full of fucking things in it. Watch her smile, dude. She'll get chapped lips. She'll smile so hard. She'll smile so hard that that fucking shit on the bottom of the middle of her lip just goes. And then all of a sudden she's like, I need chapstick. And you go check the bag because it's in there because it's a thing. That's why girls love chapstick, dude. They don't even like it. Why well, I like to always keep my lip. No, they, no, you don't. You like it because it's a thing. That's why girls say shit. Let's fix up an old car. It's so you get the car, and what do we need? The parts? And oh, we have it. Good, we have the stuff. Let's not fix up the car. I just really wanted all the shit. I'm surprised girls aren't hip to those fucking glasses that come up like this yet. They just like the real big ones because it's more of a thing. But you mark my fucking words, girls are going to be wearing those fucking in... By next summer, I'll, uh, you know what? By the end of this summer, I'm going to put it out there. Girls are going to be wearing those flip-up glasses that fucking Corey Haim used to wear. I swear to God, because it's the thing, because they've got two things now. they got this part and this part. It's amazing how much girls love things, and they do, and that's not a fucking sexist thing. It's a fucking gatherer thing, a hunter-gatherer thing. Guys go out and get the things, and they bring the things to the girl, and the girls fucking put it all in the house. Wonder what the girl is who got the first thing was. Probably some fucking a a a a a a, 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 a big fucking bunch of tied up st- sticks. It's weird how that's yeah the, a bunch of tied up sticks, and then they were like, "Oh, you can burn this, and it makes a cool scent." And the guy was like, "What are you doing with that thing? I, I you know, let's use it for firewood." And he's like, "No, no." And she's like, "No, it's for smelling." And he's like, that's not a fucking, for what we mean. They're like, it makes the hut smell good. They're like, all right. Okay. 
jewelry. There you go. Bam. What do guys wear? A tie. Or if and guys don't want to. Guys are like, I don't want to wear the fucking tie. We gotta wear the fucking tie. You see a guy who doesn't wear a tie wear a tie. You see his face, bro. Have you ever seen a guy's face who doesn't usually wear a tie wearing a tie? It sucks. Girls love to get dressed up, though. Let's do it. I mean, not every girl, you know, but I'm saying girls are like, I mean, weddings. Girls are always like, yeah, we get to go to a wedding. Guys are like, oh, fucking, I got to go to goddamn North Dakota. It's so dick for anyone to get married for real. Nah, it's not dick to get married. It's so dick to have a wedding. God, when guys are like, yeah, sorry, bro. I got to get married. You got to go. You got to come. Where is it? Hawaii. Yeah, I get No, no. That would be a good one. Where is it? Oh, it's in fucking Michigan, dude. What? Yeah, her family's from fucking Kalamazoo. So we're going to have it over there. So 90 people are going to have to go over there that don't want to. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm going to make all of my family go to Kalamazoo. Because, you know why? Because girls like things. That's how much girls like things. They'll make you go to fucking Kalamazoo because of how much they like things. So you got to go and you got to dance the night away, dude. You got to dance the night away. And you've got to trick yourself into, oh, you know what? This, Yeah, yeah, I had a good time. I didn't want to go, but I, I got there. Once I got there, was, you ever talk to that guy? Fuck that bitch ass dude. A real man goes like, yo, did you have fun though? Was it fun? A real man goes like this. Nope. Didn't want to go, was there, made the best of it because I'm a human being and didn't want to fucking have to jump. But it was fine because I made it fine in my head. All from a girl because she loves things. And you know what makes the world go round? Things. Yeah, man. I always thought about how girls like things. Ever since I was a little kid, I would be like, girls like things. I'd think about that shit. What a weird fucking kid I must have been, man. For real. One time I was walking up the um, side of the driveway, and my dad was filming me with one of those fucking... Remember in the 80s, they used, they would have those video cameras that were the size of a fucking koala? And my dad would just be holding it on his elbow like he worked for fucking ABC News. Or holding it on his shoulder like he worked for ABC News. Do I know anatomy? Yes. Did I say elbow instead of shoulder? Yes. Do I know where an elbow is? Yes. Do I know where shoulder is? Yes. Did I fuck it up? Yes. Is it fine? Sure. So he was holding it up and, 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 and he was like, hey, guys, what are you doing? And also my dad, his accent was so much thicker in the 80s. He's like, hey, guys, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you guys doing? And I was walking up and I was using a, a broom or something to to walk up the side of the fucking like a, like it was a cane. And I said, I'm an old man. And then I was, you know, like six and my brother was two. And then my brother's walking behind me in his fucking diaper. We're just just a diaper. You know how baby how like two year olds wear like a shirt and then just a diaper like put fucking shorts over the goddamn you know, I actually don't know where I fall on that. I don't know where I fall on that. This is like the first time where I'm stumped. I don't know if it's kind of like... If it's cool to fucking put shorts on over the diaper because it's like you're covering it up for society and you're being cool about it. Or if it's like to be a fucking boss baby and just put that diaper on. Hmm. Anyway... He was walking up with a no cane, pretending like he had a cane, after me. And my dad said, what are you doing? And my brother said, oh, man, no, man, copying me. And, I, dude, I was six, and I was like, this motherfucker's copying me, dude. Like, I was a six-year-old thinking, that it's bullshit. First of all, I remember thinking, it's, he doesn't even have a fucking cane. He's pretending to use the cane. This was my fucking bit. I was pretending to be old, the old man. And then he's behind me, and he's doing. He's not even saying anything different. He's literally like, "Oh, I was. I'm an old man." And I, and I wasn't in the shot after, when my brother said it, 
But my six-year-old eyes were rolling in the back of my head for sure, no doubt. Because you get your own bit, dude. I don't give a shit if you're two. Get your own goddamn bit. Do you know what I'm talking about? Scientologist, when you drive past an accident, it's not like anyone else. As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it. Okay. That's, 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 that's what you do. That's what you do as, as a fucking Scientologist, which me and Tom Cruise are. Because, dude, if there was an accident on the road, I would stop. When you drive past an accident, it's not like anyone else. As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it because you know you're the only one that can really help. So because I do that, I am in Scientology, dude. Do you guys get it? Tom Cruise and I are Scientologists. I fucking, every time I've seen a car accident, I've stopped, got out, and helped everybody I can even see. <laughs> dude, I, you think I'm fucking lying? Every single time, no matter how fast I'm going, no matter what road I'm on, if I see any accident from a one there where somebody for sure died or a fender bender, even if somebody like kind of like is by themselves but kind of rolls up on the curb by taking a right turn, I fucking I literally and they, even if they keep driving, I pull I I pull I make them pull over, and I fucking help, dude. You think I'm? It's not like anyone else. As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it because you know you're the only one that can really help. You, th I do it. One time I got a guy fucking hit another car. It was really light. It was going like 15 miles an hour. And he hit the guy and the guy bumped in and it goes honk. And he got out and they both got out. And I fucking was driving by, dude. I was driving by from the freeway. They were on a side street. I pull. I got off the next exit. I tried to find them. I found them. I got them. I got out and I said, is everybody okay? And they were like, what? And I said, are you guys okay? And they said, yeah, it was just like a little fender bender. We're going to get each other's information. And I said, okay, is there anything I can do? And the guys were like, no, nah, not really. You're not needed. And I said, I'm going to get you guys some coffee. And I fucking went to the nearest Starbucks. I got them some coffee. I came back. And they were gone at that time, whatever. But I, I fucking, you know, I drank the coffee myself. But, dude, do you think I, I'm fucking exactly it? Being a Scientologist, when you drive past an accident... Do you understand me? It's not like anyone else. As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it because... Okay. <laughs> you know you're the only one that can really help. Do you think because... anyone else would have gotten them fucking coffee, dude? No. Do you think anyone else would have stopped? If I see an accident, I'm stopping. If I... You know when you're at home? And, and, or, or you're just fucking, you know... In a cafe and you hear, Arr! I, bro, I, you don't see me anymore when that happens. If we're at a cafe and, and, and you hear, Arr! you better, and you're talking to me, you better stop because this conversation is taking a hiatus because I'm, f I'm, I'm running out of the fucking cafe and I'm looking around. Where the fuck did that sound come from? I'm going, where's that sound come from? People are like, what? What sound? I say, did you hear the fucking screams? I say, yeah. I say, where, where did it come from? And they're like, I think that area. And I'm running, dude. And do you know why? As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it because you know you're the only one that can really help. Okay. That's it. But that's, that's what drives me is that I know that we have an opportunity and, uh, to really help for the first time effectively change people's lives. And I get coffee for people in fender benders. That's it. I'll get them whatever the fuck they want. If I see someone in a fender bender, I go like this. Can I take, can I take your order? <laughs> if I see, I say, oh, for fuck's sake. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Ah, oh, fucking, can I get your information? I drive up. I say, hey, can I take your order? And they say, what? I say, I'm going to Starbucks. I'm just trying to do fucking everything I can to help. And they say, uh, we don't need coffee. And I say, if you wanted coffee, what would you want? And then the guy would be like, I don't know. Maybe I would, I would probably get like a, a venti like frappuccino if they have like kind of like with a caramel thing. And I would say, I'll be right fucking back. But that's, 
That's what drives me is that I know that we have an opportunity. I walk into Starbucks and I say, hi. And I wait in line and I'm fucking waiting. I'm amped waiting in line. If the line's long, I'm fucking amped. I'm ready, dude, because I'm a Scientologist, dude. And I'm ready and I'm fucking in line and I'm just waiting. And when I get up there and I say, dude, and I guess what I got in my fucking head when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm ordering, when, when, when I'm in line all day, all day. And I'm in line, dude. And I'm just... And I'm waiting, dude. Fucking waiting, dude. And they go... And they say, Can I take your order? And they say, Yeah, I'd like a fucking t- venti frappuccino. I need a venti frappuccino and anything you got caramel on it. And I need it fucking now. I got a guy in a fender better down the street. And I need that. What's your name? My name... You know what you put on the cup? Scientologist. And they say, okay, man, just chill. And I say, I will not chill. I got an accident down the fucking street. And they go, okay, cool. And I'm watching the shit out of them do it too, dude. They're fucking making the Frappuccino, dude. And there's close-up shots fucking of the Frappuccino. Bam, 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 bam. And they're making this shit. And I'm watching them. And I'm, and I'm low too. I'm in the, you know how there's a glass thing? And I'm right above the fucking lip of the, of the wall. And I'm watching them like this. And they're so, dis- and they're like, dude, are you cool? And I'm like, I'm cool, but there's fucking people out there that were in a fender bender. And then they go like this, and they go, and they look at the drink, and they say, Scienta, and they get to that, and I've already grabbed it, and I'm fucking running, dude. And I say, and I say, where are the straws? And they point over there, and I say, and I look, and if they got the paper straws, I fucking take a bunch of them, and I throw them in the face of the fucking employee, because I go like this, it doesn't help turtles. And then I fucking run out. If they got plastic straws, I'm jamming it in the fucking thing. If they don't, I take the top off, and I'm running, dude. And when I say I take the top off, I mean I, I, take, I rip my shirt off. And I'm fucking running, dude. And I go, here are your fucking frappuccinos. <sighs> and they go, oh, thanks, man. And if they're gone, I fucking drip the frappuccino all over my chest. And it's so, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, dude. It's so goddamn sexy that it's unreal. And it probably causes more accidents. I uh, no. To really help for the first time effectively change people's lives, and uh, I am dedicated to that. I'm gonna, I'm absolutely, uncompromisingly. There you go. <laughs> dedicated. <laughs> and that's the words that we fucking Scientologists live by. It is a hundred percent. And just to top this off, if you're listening to this. And not watching this, he did this interview in a turtleneck. Boom. Was that Hiroshima? Because, dude, that's the fucking ultimate bomb dropper at the end of this. You said all this. In a turtleneck. Hey, dude, that's it. That's how it ends. One time I was friend. I, I, I was friends with the dude that was wearing a fucking. Oh god damn! This guy made me laugh. I'm not gonna say his name, cause buddy. But holy fuck! One time I used to live with him, and he used to talk like this, man. This is how he talked, man. Ho ho! He would laugh like that. Ho ho! And he would be like, I talked about him before in the podcast, but he goes like this. He says, man, one time, dude, he was always trying to get chicks. It was so funny. He's, he's like married now and fucking, I don't know if he has kids or whatever, but he was, you know, he's like a guy. And he was just like, oh, man. Oh, man, chicks, dude. Oh, he'd say like that. He was so, he was eh, se from Ventura, California. It was unbelievable. He was, he couldn't have been more from Ventura, California. Unbelievable. He was from Ventura, uh, California so hard. His name was fucking Ventura. That's what he be. I should call him fucking. His first name was Mike. He's, I should call him fucking Mike Ventura, pet detective. Oh, man. Anyway, um, uh, and he looked for real like a serial killer. Like he had this fucking impossible look in his eyes. That was just like when you think of him in retrospect, you imagine all of his his whole eye, even the iris and the pupil, all of it in the white part, it's all brown. That's how I imagined him. Anyway. He's fucking damn sexy, too. He was just a sexy dude. Girls loved this dude because he just didn't give a fuck. Anyway. Anyway, dude. um, 
What, so, what story was I telling? Ho ho! What was he? Oh yeah. So he was in Las Vegas once. Man, I went to Las Vegas once. Dude, this story fucking made me laugh so hard I cried. He said, I went to Las Vegas once, man, and I was walking around, man, because he had a turtleneck on when we were talking. I was like, you wear turtlenecks, bro? He was like, yeah, man. So I was in Las Vegas once, and I was just walking around, man. And dude, oh, I swear to God, dude, oh, I was like, you know, we were all trying to get chicks, but like every time I saw the hot, a hot girl walking around in Las Vegas, she was always with a dude wearing a turtleneck. And I was like, man, man. I got to get a turtleneck. This was in Vegas. So I went, I, I left the group to get a turtleneck. And I was like, you did? And he was like, yeah, man. All of these girls had the fucking hot, had, all these hot chicks had dudes with turtlenecks on, man. I was like, how many did you see? He was like, I swear to God, man, every girl. All with guys with turtlenecks. So I got a turtleneck. Dude, I got the turtleneck and I wore it that night. And I swear to God, I got the hottest chick in Las Vegas. And he was my favorite guy in my life at that point. That was the guy. He usurped all of my family members and friends beforehand. That was, dude, and I was, it, it was so funny to me because I was like, I didn't know if he actually thought that it was for real. Uh, I didn't know if he actually thought it was for real, the turtleneck, or if he was in on the joke. That's why I liked him. When guys, when I, when guys... <laughs> When guys who, because I'm always, I always like feel like I know if someone is for real or not. But dude, that shit was making me laugh. Dude, somebody commented under this Mission Impossible, or under the Scientology thing. <laughs> you can skip to any point of the video and still have no clue what the actual hell he's talking about. <laughs> Orgs are there to help, okay? But we, as you know, as also the public, it's like. We have a responsibility. It's not just the orgs. If we can bring peace uh, and unite cultures. Uh, Let's skip to any part. That once you know these tools and you know that they work, it's it's not good enough. That romp and play and just do that. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what I want it to be. Okay. That's how I would, you know, there's times I'd like to do that, but. My favorite part about this video is that it's cut together, so you can't, like, there's no interview questions. I like to imagine the interviewer, or either, I, like, I either like to imagine the interviewer just like this, just all, the whole time, just like, just stuttering like the fucking King's speech, like Colin Firth, just like, I, 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 you remember that? Where they put that in the fucking preview. I, 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 And you were like, all right, guys, we get it. You know, he stutters. Colin Firth fucking killed in that role. I didn't see it, but I know he killed it. And he deserved the Oscar. And I know he deserved the Oscar because I saw a fucking clip of a scene where he was like, I, 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 And if you're fucking trying to kill it playing a part of a guy who stuttered and do it that much, dude, hey, Oscar, there you go. Golden Globe Award, there you go. Actors' Choice Award, there you go. SAG Award, there you go. NAACP Award, there you go. I know you're not black, but I don't give a fuck. You get all the awards. I want to play a stutterer and straight up be a fucking dude that's just, I, 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 dude, I'll kill it, dude. You think I won't kill it? I don't give a fuck. Dude, I'll kill it. Dude, I'll, you put me in a fucking movie with the drama, dude, that's it. It's over. It's over. I'm going to be the best actor around, dude. Uh, and you know how I, people on set will be like, I don't know if this is working. And then that shit cuts together and you see me just, I, 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 That's it, dude. It's like, he really, people talking about it like, oh, so how's the shoot going? Yeah, he he's playing a stutter, you know, we got... He's really going for it, man. It's kind of weird. I'm not sure. And then you cut that shit together, and the Oscar goes to Chris D'Elia. And I get up on stage, and I give my fucking acceptance speech. I give my fucking acceptance speech. And you know what it sounds like? When you drive past an accident, it's not like anyone else. As you drive past, you know you have to do something about it, because you know you're the only one that can really help. But that's... That's what drives me, is that I know that we have an opportunity and uh, 
to really help. And they're going, oh, ah, thank you, Mary. Christopher Lear won for fucking the prince's speech. Um, so anyway, life rips, babies. Life fucking rips. Life is what you make it. You know what I mean? I'm a, I know that because I'm a Scientologist. Dude, life rips. Life rips. You just have to realize it rips and then it rips. That's it. Life rips if you think it rips. It doesn't rip if you don't think it rips. If you start being like, oh, man, my back, I got back pain. Do I have back pain? Yes. Do sometimes I get a twinge in my shoulder? Yes. Do I let it bog me down sometimes? Honestly, yes. But then do I stop sometimes and I realize tomorrow might be a better day? Yes. And then do I wake up the next day and do I feel better? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But then the next day, do I feel better? Yes. And that is when I realize that life rips. Yes. And then does life start to rip even more? Yes. That's it, my babies. It's all about attitudes. And he stays drinking LaCroix. And he stays keeping turducken out his mouth, dude. If I was on an island and somebody was trying to torture me to get information, I would say no, unless they tried to fucking put turducken in my mouth. And I'd be like, okay, okay, I'll fucking tell you who did it. Um, so anyway, uh, uh. Anyway, my point is don't fucking fucking move my car around when you're a valet guy for no reason. Uh, You want to do Long Island misconnections now? You want to do it now? What what, what was the fucking eye roll? Oh, he looks like he's fucking he's eye rolling, but he's not eye rolling. All right, dude. I see you want to do the thing. He goes, uh, uh, and then I said, what's up? And he's like, oh, I didn't mean it. Be aware of your face, one fire. You know what I mean? That's the other thing. Be aware. Have you ever seen people who aren't? I mean, he's, I'm joking with him, but like, have you seen people who aren't aware of their face and they're just doing shit like looking at menus like this? Like, bro, what are you doing with your face? I want to tap that guy on his shoulder when he's looking at a menu like that, and I want to say, hey, your face is your face. What are you doing with it? I just want to say your face is your face, and I want to fucking bounce. Because what are you doing with it? You got one face, buddy. You got one face. Don't make it do weird shit out in public if you don't want it to be. Guys who fucking, uh, fucking weird ass. Make your face rip as hard as possible always, dude. Otherwise, you're not going to get any girls wet. (laughs) Make your fucking face rip as fucking hard as possible. All right. Long Island misconnections, which I've been told are are so Long Island, it's unbelievable. IHOP. You were my server at IHOP in Comac. First of all, Comac is such a fucking, like, Long Island-sounding fucking bullshit. Tall brunette, now I want you to hop on me. So fucking clever. You were my server at IHOP in Comac, tall brunette. Now I want you to hop on me. Ow! Uh, a fucking poet. Dude, you got poets in Long Island. Oh, yo, I didn't realize there were poets in Long Island until I read these fucking misconnections, huh? I hop. You were my server at I hop and Carmack, tall brunette. Now I want you to hop on me. Do not contact me with unsolicited services or offers. with the fucking subject of this one or the the title of this one free taco bell at 1 a.m port jeff station the fact that the name jeff is in there anyway anywhere is hilarious i just pulled up to the drive-thru and told you and you told me you waited an hour to get your food and they gave you a shitload so if you offered me some shitload of it so you offered me some you in a black SUV, and you said you worked at a restaurant. Do not contact me once this before. Dude, if you're trying to hit on a girl, don't ever say shitload. <laughs> That's like saying heaps. You ever talk to a fucking Australian guy? Like, oh, yeah, heaps. Yeah, yeah, heaps. I like your heaps. You know? Oh, Pussy dried up. (laughs) 
You could be drinking a, a fucking bo- a bottle of water. Go back and keep it there. You go to bo- drinking a bottle of water. It'd be like, Lucky, hi, how's it going? And the girl's just like, oh, I'm so into you. And you're drinking a bottle of water. Lucky heaps. Where the fuck did my water go? Where the fuck did my water go? Oh, you said heaps. And it dried up all the fucking pussies. And even the water dried up. So you got an empty bottle now. If you're trying... Dude, if you... Hey, I, dude, I just fucking like it. I like it, girl. I'd like to take you out. Um, You know? Maybe we can go somewhere and get a shitload of food. Bye. For the first time, effectively, I know you have to do something about it. Because Does anybody need any help? You know you're the only one that can Guy really just help. said he liked, he liked me a shitload and I drove away and got an accident. I I'll be right back really with your coffee. I'll be right uh, back with your coffee. Wow, this song fucking rips, dude. Fucking with the guitar. Imagine playing this live. What is that even? And they're... I love how they tried to make it rip more. The song already rips. The song already rips, dude. And they try to fucking. When I first saw the first Mission Impossible, and they made that fucking song with time, I was I go I, I was in the theater out loud. I literally go like this. Oh, of course. I already knew what it was going to sound like, and it did, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. I fuck to this. I make love to this every time. Every single time I fuck to this, I've made a kid. Um. Okay, what's the next one? One Janice. Oh, is there a more name that's fucking? What do you call it? Then Janice. More Long Island than Janice. Maybe no. There's not. Honestly, you know what her hair looks like. Wondering what happened to you, Janice. Used to see you driving up the block. It's kind of Boston. I can't get away from it. I was a neighbor a few houses down. Did you move? I don't see you anymore. Hey, no, your neighbors. Hey, guy. She didn't fucking, you didn't know her because she didn't, because you creeped her out, dude. Do not contact me with unsolicited services or offers. You know? Janice, dude. Every time Janice drove by, she was like, oh, there's that fucking creep. Do not contact me once this is services office. You cu- Here's another one. You cut my hair. Should know her. You cut my hair Saturday morning. You commented on my gold chain. Dude. Salt Log Island. I would like to get to know you and thank you for a fantastic haircut. Do nothing. The New York. The most New York word is fantastic. For real. You think it's not, but it is. Oh, it's Fantastic. Oh, yeah, you have, have a pizza at fucking John's. It's fantastic. You get the fantastic dough, you fucking whip it around. It's fucking fantastic, man. You ever try to fucking Lumix cameras? They're fantastic, man. They get a shot like no other. You never see a fucking... You never see a fucking... You never see a fucking shot like this. You the way they zoom in, in and out. It's fucking fantastic. You ever see the walls over at the fucking museum? Fantastic. Unbelievable. I swear to God, that lake over there... Fucking, you ever been to Massapeka? It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's fucking fantastic. They got like two, three months of the year. Fantastic. The other months, also fantastic, but I'm just saying. All right, I guess that's it, huh? Um, all right, I'm going to go. You guys fucking ripped it, dude. Turducken, my bitches. If you eat turducken, don't, you go fuck yourself. Uh, what do we got? That's it. Uh, Cash App is brought to you by Congratulations. Make sure to fucking download that. I don't know where the hell that thing is, but... Oh, here it is. Uh, download the Cash App for free on the App Store or Google Play Market. Uh, download the Chris D'Elia app. You can listen to the... Uh, watch. You can watch the first little bit of this uh, podcast whenever I put it up live before anyone else. There's merch at the store. Crystalia.com. We keep on restocking my babies. 
you can go get gift cards too for birthdays and stuff if you know that they're a fucking fan of the podcast or whatever or or me uh, tweet me subscribe rate and review the show on iTunes it really helps uh, and get the word out there dude we're always trying to grow man this podcast we're all about growing that's what we're all about spreading the cult getting that log cabin eventually uh, you can tweet me up and uh, I gotta I gotta wait on announcing my thing that I said I was gonna announce last week but I got something coming out cool coming out cool and uh, I got I think I got a few things maybe I gotta talk about but uh, you guys gotta wait on that sorry about that uh, and thanks a lot guys you guys are the best my babies thank you very much see you when we see you <laughs>